Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we are doing a review of the true MFDs that I have purchased from Etsy and what I think of them. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. All right, guys, so first out of the gate, um, today we are going to be talking about these awesome MFD screens. Now, the Cougar MFDs, the actual buttons around the side here, are purchased separately. These are Thrustmasters Cougar MFDs. It's the screen specifically that we're going to be talking about today. Now, I want to make a couple things very clear. Um, unfortunately, I'm a bonehead, and I thought, hey, I should do the review after I installed them into the cockpit. They're a pain in the butt to remove the way I have them installed, so I'm not going to be removing them. But if you guys have been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that I don't hold back. I will absolutely give you guys the pros and the cons and what my thoughts were on the build process and the overall construction and assembly. Um, also, please keep in mind that these were not given to me or provided by uh, for review. Uh, these were purchased with my own money. Um, so again, all the more reason that the information you guys are going to get is going to be true hard fact. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the Etsy website where I purchased these. I'm going to break down uh, some of the screenshots that are available, which is basically the same thing you guys would see. Uh, and then we're going to come in here and I'm going to talk to you guys about the functionality. And I'm also going to tell you guys how I have them connected. Because right now, if you guys look, I've got my three monitors as well as my super ultra wide over there all connected to the same machine, as well as the two MFDs. Um, and a touch screen over here. This is completely unrelated. Uh, this was actually my first attempt at creating my own one of those. And I'm gonna tell you guys why I decided to go with this particular product. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So let's move over to the website for a minute. All right, so right out of the gate, I know you guys are gonna go straight for the target and that's gonna be the price. Bear with me on this for a minute before you guys trip out, okay? Because I know people, a lot of people are going to look at those and be like, whoa, that's too expensive. They're really not. So these are 7-inch touch screens, or excuse me, not touch screens. These are 7-inch LCD screens, um, as well as, let's, let's go look over here first. So first, here's the overall construction that's given with them. So you get the touch screen as well as the 3D printed box. The 3D print is done very, very well and very, very smooth. All the hardware necessary to mount it is uh, provided as far as uh, closing up the case. And if you choose, if you use the original Thrustmaster mounts, uh, he does provide some tabs and mounting system uh, included with this particular build. Here it is from the top down view. And actually what's funny is that you guys can see these bevels here or the, well, yeah, the bezel, excuse me, of the actual screen. Once you put the Cougar MFDs on them, they're gone. You can no longer see the bezels. Um, so it works very, very nicely. Um, I have been thoroughly impressed. Now I told you guys that I would tell you why I moved to these. Here's a real quick, some video footage of how he's got his set up here. You can see they're on the, just standing up on the desk. The reason why I went with these is I initially tried to do my own and I have a 3D printer and I tried to find a plan and I thought I had it working and it was just, it was a lot harder than I thought. Like I'm not, and now keep that in mind, I'm not a very, I'm not very good with a 3D printer. I just need to call that as it is. I am not very good with a 3D printer. Uh, I try, but you know, it just, I get enough, I, I get by just enough to, to cause more problems. Um, at $170, first off, everything that I needed came with the box. They were already... Uh, assembled and ready to go came with the power strip which we'll talk about in a minute the power cord is actually one of my uh, complaints if you will um, but they were done very very well they're clean they look very very nice the 3d printing you have to really look at it to get some flaws out of the deal uh, let's see if he's got any pictures of the back end here here it is without the monitors or the screens inside it the screens lay right down inside the bezel your control board sits down there this rail goes on top of that um, and then these are the feet if you choose to do the uh, desk stand uh, method, method of installation. Um, they are so nice, guys. They work so well. 
and I'm going to show you guys how I have mine connected. Now we see in the picture here that the option here is through HDMI, standard HDMI cable. So if you want to connect directly to your computer uh, video card, you can. But as I showed you guys, my video card's tapped out. So I'm going to show you guys what I used uh, in order to connect these via USB using a USB to HDMI adapter. But I want to give you guys some tips on that. So stick around for this next part. Okay, so once again, don't forget about price just yet. Just hear me out so that you guys can understand why I did what I did. This is a USB to HDMI 3.0 adapter. Okay, you can see right here, there's the dongle hanging down. Okay, oop, didn't mean to click that. But you know what, I'll just let that play while we're here. And again, these weren't given to me. I purchased these with my own money three times nonetheless. Um, but this isn't showing us crap. I want to you guys to see what how it actually connects. Uh, okay, stupid video. Get out of here. Seriously, go away. Um, so you guys can sort of see right there in the video, there's the dongle right there hanging down. Plugs into a USB port. The HDMI cable comes into the back. Now, there are cheaper ones out here, but I, I urge you guys to uh, take caution when you go cheap with these. And I'll tell you why, because I, I went that route the first time. So when I bought the first set, okay, it was like a $20 adapter. It worked sort of, it had a real hard time connecting. And if you just even barely bumped the USB cable or the adapter, it would disconnect. And specifically, for example, speaking to DCS world, all right, which these, which is where these kind of things will shine you that are like Falcon BMS or something like that. I mean, you can use these screens for just about anything, but they're designed specifically for those cougars, which shine in the combat simulators. Um, but, uh, if you have flown DCS and you have ever experienced a controller disconnecting while you're flying or a screen disconnecting or changing resolution or anything like that, then you know what happens. At that point, all of your monitor settings in DCS reset and you now get to completely close out of DCS world and launch it back in. They are garbage. I bought two of them. I thought maybe the first one was just faulty. Um, and then I bought another one and the same behavior happened. I tried zip tying the cables tight. I tried zip tying the, or, uh, using two sided tape to stick the adapter down real tight. So it couldn't move. And again, the slightest movement of those adapters or the cables and they would disconnect. So I have a buddy of mine who used a, there is a two port HDMI to USB 3.0 adapter that's available at Best Buy for about 60 to US dollars. Um, so you guys might try something like that if you want to go this route. Or again, you do have the option of HDMI directly into the back of your computer, um, which obviously won't have any problems at all. And you don't need the adapter. But if you choose to go the route I did, which I highly recommend, it is very, very nice being able to have access to all of my main monitors and have the adapters plugged in. Um, all three of the screens that I showed you, the touch screen on the right and the two MFDs are all connected via these adapters here. Uh, they work very, very well. I can vouch for these. I have had no problem with them. I can move them. I can wiggle them. Nothing happens with my screens. They uh, boot up very, very nicely and the computer very quickly recognizing them. And by the way, mine are actually connected to a powered USB hub. So they're not even still going directly to the computer. They're going from the monitor to the adapter. The adapter is going to the USB hub. The USB hub then goes to the PC. Um, and they are working flawlessly. And you guys are going to see some of this in action, especially with things like the TGP, for those of you interested in DCS world. Okay, so take caution if you guys decide to go the, the cheaper route with these adapters. Because this is definitely a scenario with, with just like as with most electronics, you get what you pay for. All right, and in speaking of you get what you pay for, um, you guys can see the connection there. Now, you're going to see a little bit of video lag. Keep in mind what you are seeing here is recorded through a GoPro, uh, so there is going to be a delay between the time that you're seeing on the monitor to what you're seeing in the camera to what actually makes it to the recording. I can tell you that what I am seeing is the radar track is actually one-to-one. -one. It is moving perfectly in sync with what you're seeing on the display. So the... Uh, camera here oops i didn't mean to do that the camera here is working just as fast um as the uh what you guys are seeing on the gopro um and i accidentally moved my 
there we go all right now i can see you guys again so let's go ahead and check some things out so for example we are in an active pause right now in dcs world so everything's still working the plane is just holding still so for example it responds very very well gosh darn it i just have to hope that it it's because i'm clicked out of the screen hang on i'm just gonna hope you guys get the recording well so if i want to move my things around here we can go to the FLIR pod real quick let me make it my sensor of interest okay i can very easily i gotta switch hands here i gotta move to the throttle everything moves so nice guys it is so so smooth i'm sitting here watching the gopro and i can tell you right now that it's got a little bit of lag that i am not seeing on the monitors okay um, it works very very well makes it very very easy to read everything keeps everything nice and close um, managing the stores page is even better let me move my microphone so i can make sure you guys hear me moving to the stores page all right so oops we were just in the stores page um i do think i need to adjust some of my settings here but like there's the j82 the jdam okay let's move over to the jdam display it's not timed out yet but if we wanted to we go to the mission page oh that's plan mission page okay set our target for example coming back over to the tgp if i wanted to designate my target now look you guys get a little dcs tutorial too here Okay, boom. And then very easily access all of my information. It is so, now I know you guys can see all the same information on the screen. I'm telling you, it's a completely different feeling. I'm gonna say the biggest thing that I personally get out of this particular setup versus just using what's on the monitor and just using the bezels is immersion, right? I'm all about immersion. We, we, we go into simulation for immersion. That is That is the principle of why we all build our cockpits or why we buy our setups is we want that immersion of flying. Dude, I really need to adjust that. Um, setting these up in DCS, I'll show you guys here in just a minute what the config file looks like. Um, it the That's the other thing that I really love about these particular, um, this developer is he also sends you very, very good instructions on how to set these up inside of your simulator. Uh, you do have to go into the DCS uh, config file for the monitor setup you do have to tell dcs where in your resolution that these monitors are located uh, and he does a very very good job of, of, of describing how to do that i also have a video uh, that i will try to remember here to put a link either in the description or hopefully there's a card popping up on the screen right now uh, on how i set these up um, i need to do a little bit of adjustment you can see here that the title is a little bit above the button and we have a very large space here. So what I would do is I'll go into the config file and we can see that it's matching up top pretty nicely. Uh, it could probably come down a little bit. So what I'll probably do is move the entire image down just a little bit, but then stretch it vertically. So that way everything lines up a bit better. Uh, but you guys, this is such a slick um, tool to have. Uh, it really makes things very, very nice, and it's a lot faster than going to the mouse. Uh, they are very, very clean. They work extremely well. They are color displays, which is one of the other bonuses. So if you really wanted to, and I've actually debated doing this, for example, with the right one. I haven't decided if I'm going to or not. These are color displays. So one of the things that would kind of cheating when you think about it, but I've thought about using the color AMPCD, which is... Um, the you can barely see it up there in dcs world oh you know what here i can go ahead and move the camera i think here uh, let's see here i gotta bust out my mini keyboard so you guys can it should have worked it did oh no it didn't you son of a gun come on now uh alt and c i think that worked yeah it worked that time that guy right there the one down there at the bottom uh, that's what I've debated using. And if I do that, then my TGP display, for example, here would be in color. Uh, there's, there's just so many endless things that you guys can do with these. And if you want, you can even buy three of them. I think he has a three pack set. I only bought the two because of the way that I want to do this and maintaining my ability to also fly comfortably in Microsoft flight simulator. I didn't want to go full F 18 cockpit. Uh, but it's a, it's a whole different ball game having these nearby and then even having the ability to see them on the screen upstairs as well. You know on the monitor um you know be you know the bounce back and forth it's a really awesome addition they are absolutely worth the money 
Um, again, if you uh, are going the route that I went, those adapters really make it very, very nice and uh, keep everything working very smoothly. One of the things I will tell you that Windows, if you're going my route and you've got so many monitors that you have no choice is be ready. Windows is a kind of a pain in the butt. When you first plug them in, it'll combine them as one screen. Don't let it do that because it's duplicate. Excuse me. Um, as well as uh, it will for sometimes it uh, detects them as or sets them up as uh, inverted. Uh, so you guys want to make sure that you set them back to landscape versus landscape flipped. But just a couple window settings. And that's just Microsoft being a pain in the ass. Uh, that has nothing to do with the quality of the product. Uh, I'm really blown away with these guys. I've been very, very satisfied with these. I've been using them for quite a while. I've had these uh, probably a bit over a month and a half now. Um, and I just hadn't had the time to uh, get around to it. I've still got quite the backlog of things that I want to review with you guys. Um, but uh, anyway, I hope this gives you guys something to think about, especially if you're interested in building your own pit. They are a ton of fun to have um, and really changes the game. They work with any of the aircraft that have a left and right MFD. Uh, they are not aircraft specific. They're not specific to the F-18. Uh, any aircraft that has an MFD, uh, they work. They actually even work with the Apache. The problem with like the Apache, for example, is on the OSBs. There's six of them on each side versus five. Uh, but for example, the F-16 and F-18 and A-10, they shine. Well, guys, that is going to wrap up today's video. I hope you guys have found this useful and given you something to think about. As always, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if this helped you out. Uh, it truly does help me out quite a bit. And then, uh, you know, give shout outs and, and all that good jazz. Post it up on, you know, your social media, billboards, stop signs, whatever works. But above all else, you guys know the drill. Stay safe and healthy. And I will see you guys in the next one.